Hi, Sarah Key here. Just going through what all my videos are about. There's lots of different videos that may be confusing and I think if I can give you a quick rundown, they're downloadable from my site as you know. Uh, quick rundown on what they're all about, it'll make it easier to make a choice. So here we go, this is the first three are the, ba are the basic the basic Sarah Key method, basic understanding of the anatomy of the spine, the causes of back pain, and what you can do about it in the short term, appeasing, and in the longer term. So if you did nothing else, you'd watch that, and that it consists of, that's put together in, in what is known as the complete back pain video set, but there are others which go into the more complex syndromes. It's impossible to put them all together, as you might imagine. So the causes of back pain, how the spine works, why the pain, problems with compression, that the root cause of all of human back pain at the base of the spine particularly is compression, and my five stages of breakdown, which I talk about in my book, Back Sufferer's Bible, and some very basic facts about sitting, and that's the causes. And then relief. Now this is important because this is when people are in crisis. I call it the, I call it um, spinal appeasing that has to be done because you, I'm I'm well known for my d spinal decompression techniques with the back block. But when your back is bad and you're in screaming pain, you can't do the back block, and you have to appease it. You have to calm things down. You have to. Um, <laughs> do very little really except try and get fluid in and out of the discs so that you take away some of those highly toxic and highly irritating waste products both out of the disc itself and the muscles so why do you need to appease how to do it yourself and also again i have this video where i talk about the mind about your attitude you being highly alarmed, highly excitable, very upset, panicky, frightened, all mitigates against you getting better. And if you can understand that and try and get a sense of um, calmness, then the appeasing will work. If you're too strung up and het up, then it's very difficult for anything to work. So that's number two. And then number three is longer term treatment. So you're not in acute pain. You're not having to do all the calming stuff. You're not having to do treatment every two hours like you have to do in the calming stuff, the appeasing. This is really how you make a chronic old back better. And I talk about decompression therapy, show you how to do it yourself, explain why bending is so important, using the upper back block too because so often people have a lower back problem but they actually have an upper one as well and the very important exercise called the floor twist which twists the spine twists that mesh of the disc wall if you stretch the mesh by twisting it then it's easier for you to get separation this cordad separation um, which is the back block decompression pulling the spine apart like a concertina so those are the main three which go to make up the complete back pain video package. There's 14 videos in that, and um, they were the first maids. Um, um, this is a very popular um, package because it has those basics and those important basics for you to be going on. Now these are, this is another earlier still uh, back, pain, back pain video um, really the A to Z of, of the back block, how you do it yourself, taking you right through it. And the important thing about this is that it's in real time, so it's slow. It's, it's actually in the making, in the happening. So it's not just this is what you do and, and for how long, it's actually doing it in real time so you can follow it. And the brief back, pa back pain video package used to be the back app. I had an app for a while called the back app. It, it was actually too much information for the back app. But this is a series of six very short little video sna snaps about, um, clips I should say, about um, six minutes long about each. And again, the way, why your back is painful, getting yourself out of pain, the mind matters again. So it's very, very pithy punchy short stuff, doing your own hands-on. There's a very important clip of me doing it on my own back with my own hands and showing you how to do it yourself. Again, talking about bending and then showing you the back block, um, 
the, the basics of doing the back block. Then we get to the more specific ones, and this is important for lab for, for anybody with an instability or who's got a PARS defect, for example, or a spondylolisthesis, or plain hypermobility of the low back. Now, you won't necessarily know you have that yourself, but if your back is giving way and you really, this is where I talk about the symptoms of instability, where you can be sure that you can, you know that you're doing it for the, you're doing this, these exercises for the right reason. Instability is, a, is the, my fifth stage of my five stages of breakdown. It's not very common, but it's hard to fix. So I see a lot of them uh, because they've been everywhere. But there's a lot you have to do yourself at home with instability. And you need really the video if you've got any of those um, diagnoses. You've got racketing around in the back of your brain somewhere. Then here's the upper back. Um, treatment video. Again, um, we are finding as the technology computer age captures us for longer and for the decades bound up that people are getting problems higher up almost as readily as they are lower down, often in tandem. So this is very much um, talks about posture, what good posture is, working postures, how you alleviate upper back pain actually get rid of it, appease it there and then and now. The good and bad core exercises, because the bad core exercises actually make you more stooped and more pokey in the neck. Uh, and the, the two important upper back straighteners and then the four important upper back strengtheners, because you have to get straight before you can be strengthened. You can't do one without the other. So very important. Again, this is a specific video for tall people. There are a unique set of biomechanical circumstances that tall people are afflicted with. There are exercises for both upper and lower back that must be bunched together. It's a very effective, uh, again, punchy, short video. Yoga routine, again, it does talk a lot about the back block, but there are other things to do too. Yoga, I say, is wonderful for, for everything, for not just for backs. It's the greatest therapeutic uh, modality that we have, apart from hands-on, so much cleverer than the new stuff like, I'm afraid to say, Pilates, which is the rage. Yoga and Tai Chi are really in tandem. In fact, I often say if people do yoga and walk, that's all they need to do. So this is really about how yoga emphasizes the non-familiar, non-stereotype patterns and how different parts of the body do the same thing over and over again and how really to fix a shoulder, for example, you've got to restore forgotten movement and you've also got to restore the almost invisible little accessory movements of a shoulder joint to get it working and how yoga so cleverly, brilliantly harvests um, isolates those movements that are necessary and 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 you do this yourself without even knowing so I love yoga and this is a good expose on yoga sciatica also very important spinal structure we talk about here the difference between acute and chronic sciatica very very common to have chronic sciatica pain down the back of your leg worse after a car trip acute sciatica is very different it's raging what we call lancinating leg pain you've often got um, numbness as well those two conditions are absolutely at the other end of the spectrum to each other how you appease the spine with uh, the difference between referred pain and acute and, and neuritis, actual inflammation of the nerve itself. Appeasing sciatica exercises and chronic sciatica exercises, they are very, very different. Chronic sciatica has an awful lot of stretching where you're pulling the nerve free, where it's often adherent with adhesions stuck in the spine so the nerve can't pull out. Those are very different exercises to treating acute sciatica. So we deal with both. Scoliosis as well, a very big topic in back circles. A lot of people have scoliotic prop scoliosis. Uh, explaining about the curves, about how there's a primary and a secondary curve, they go in different ways, about the apices, the peak of each curve is always the problem segment, refers pain, uh, how you can have headaches, you can have pain in your shoulder, how you can have pain in your waist, and how you can have sciatica, all part of the same syndrome because the spine is bending this way and that and creating inflammatory hot spots at different joints. 
strengthening the deep muscles, which are so important, and untwisting you, getting your, your back block used, using the back block in such a way that you're actually paling out the scoliotic curves. Very important. Lumbar facet syndrome is a more recent one, where the role of the facet joints is discussed, what they do, what their purpose is, why they break down. This is really, this is, this is, a, this is a video about one-sided back pain. Very common where you want to get your hands in. It also goes by the name of facet joint arthropathy, which is stage two of my five stages of breakdown. But lumbar facet syndrome is being talked about more and more, and it's good for you to know what it's about, how you treat it, and some wonderful new Seriki new exercises where you mobilize your facets yourself, creating traction through the facets more so than the actual disc at the front. The disc with facet joint arthropathy or uh, lumbar facet syndrome is really not your focus of trouble and these exercises really focus zero in on the facet itself. There's, uh, and there's also um, um, about knees. Now I'm very interested in knees because I've got a wonky knee but this is very important because it's about joint cartilage and there's a rapidly, there's a pandemic of, of knee breaking down stuff. People who were previously fit in their youth such as me but lots of people and I believe there's a very big role of diet and omega-3 and it's a very good, if I may say so, and long lecture. There are another two um, videos in the pipeline uh, actually have been made and will soon be going up on the site. They are um, treating unilateral partial sacralization, which is a which is a, a uh, congenital anomaly of the base of the spine where the vertebra is partially fused to the back of the pelvis. It also goes by the name of Bertolotti syndrome. And there's another one in the pipeline which is not up yet, but I'll tell you about it because it won't be long, and that is um, sitting to avoid pain. Very important indeed because sitting is such a huge factor. It actually can cause a back problem, but also if you are in acute pain, you can't sit and, and you need to know what to do and you need to know how to be preventive. One of the reasons we do have to be preventive is that we are just simply so much more sedentary than we used to be, and that's a big factor. We're taller, we're less fit, our cartilage is softer and soapier, and we sit all the time. So there we are, that's a pretty good rundown. See how we go. Hello, baby. Hello, darling. <laughs>